Welcome to the online Pursue Your Spark podcast, where you ignite the spark to live a bold life each and every day. And now your host, Heike Yates. Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Today, episode number 12, I would like to talk about how do you get more sleep and energy and why sleep is so important and how you can get more of it. I've put out a little survey just to find out how you ladies feel about sleep or how much sleep are you getting and um, how do you go to sleep or what are your biggest problems are with sleeping. And here were the top, here are the top three that you told me. Number one was not sticking to a sleep schedule that you don't seem to kind of be able to figure out how to get to sleep and what you should do before you go to sleep. Number two, not going to bed at a reasonable time. A reasonable time is may vary for many of us. Um, My bedtime is really early because I'm an early riser. My energy is high in the morning and I'm just totally winding down at night. But that was number two, not going to bed at a reasonable time. And number three was how do I get energy if I can't sleep? You know, I have always been a good sleeper from little on. My parents kept joking about how they could store me anywhere, literally, We would go for a car ride and they say, oh, go sit in the back of the seat. I would lie down and go to sleep. We'd go to grandma's house. I would snuggle in a chair and go to sleep. No problem. And to this day, I can go to sleep quickly. Uh, I've raised two children, so I do wake up sometimes thinking, oh my goodness, I'm on alert for my kids, but um, they have long moved out, but I guess your mommy genes just keep plugging away at you. But what has really affected my sleep is menopause or midlife, midlife menopause. They all come together at the same time. And I can totally relate to when I wake at night, but uh, when I wake up at two in the morning and I can freaking not go to sleep and I lie there and I think and I sweat or not, but it's sometimes my body just says, done, let's get up and move. And that makes for a tough morning to get up and a tough day to go through. So I can totally relate to that not sleeping business. So how do we know that we don't get enough sleep? And some of these signs are not going to surprise you because they tie in with perimenopause or premenopause and menopausal symptoms. So number one is the foggy mind. If you're in menopause, you know foggy mind. You're just walking through the day and it's, it's, I always picture it or, or describe it as like walking on the cloud. You're there, but you're really not. You're sometimes confused and you can't make decisions quickly. Um, you're, you're just not quite as sharp as you used to. And you're thinking, Ah, it's menopause, but maybe not. Maybe it's just the lack of sleep. Forgetfulness. Yay, I'm raising my virtual hand here. Forgetfulness. And I'm sure you can relate to this one. I walk into the other room to get, what was it again I was going to get? So I do have sticky notes. I have little pads of paper where I write down what I want to do or important messages that I want to remember because I have become forgetful and it's not just because of menopause. A number two telltale of not getting enough sleep is we are unhappy. We're just not like ourselves anymore and I hear it all the time. I just want to be me again. That's hard when you don't get enough sleep and we talk about how we we solve these problems, what, what we can do to get be more like ourselves. Now, because of them not feeling like ourselves, we run the risk of feeling depressed. And that can be a much bigger problem to deal with. So unhappiness, not feeling like ourselves, feeling depressed or sad, 
uh, and our stress increases. I know on the days where I don't sleep well, everything just bothers me. Everything just stresses me out. And I get impatient and short with the people around me. And I do catch myself sometimes. But I have to think back. Did I sleep well? Unhappiness, number two tell, tell tale sign. I have a hard time with this word, tell tale sign. Uh, number three would be, you are sick a lot. Colds, runny nose, coughs. Does that ring a bell with you maybe? Number four is struggling through your workouts. You're not motivated to work out at all. Well, you say, Heike, who wants to work out when you didn't sleep all night? You're barely schlepped to work. You schlepped yourself back home on the couch and then you just click button, Netflix, glass of wine, done. Um, that's a big issue. When you don't sleep, you don't want to work out. So it's almost, um, you call this the snowball effect, I guess, in, in English, that one thing leads to another and you're not motivated to work out. Then you feel more tired. You go and uh, don't work out. So you gain weight and you feel flabby and it's like, it's all awful. Low energy and endurance is a big one. Um, if you are not, if you're sleepy and you're not motivated to work out because you have low energy, you will definitely not have endurance to work out. And here's something I found in my researches: several studies have shown that women, as they age, um, as you know, I'm an Ironman. Um, these studies have shown that women who did Ironman in the past have cut back to halves because of the lack of sleep they get. And I have to tell you, you don't have to be an Ironman to feel that way. But I have cut back to doing half Ironman as well. It just seems to work better with my energy level for the time. And um, like I said, if you're not an Ironman, just getting your butt ski out the door to hit the treadmill, treadmill is a big feat sometimes when you're sleep deprived. Um, sleep, a lack of sleep, it can put you in a very depressing state. And you go, of course it does. If I don't sleep, I want more sleep and I can't get more sleep. I am so depressed because I don't know what to do about it. And that's why we're talking today about how you get more sleep and energy. Girls, we're on to something. Now, number five of the telltale signs is you're struggling with your weight. Poor sleep has been linked to excess body fat. Uh, in a study by Virend, I hope I pronounce this right, Summers, a professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic. And here's what he found. Growing evidence has linked healthy weight with getting adequate sleep. And in a new report presented by the American Heart Association, Researchers found that sleep deprived, uh, sleep deprivation is associated with overeating. Huh. In the study they did, people who slept were sleep deprived, ate more than 500 additional calories daily. Okay, I say this again. People that were sleep deprived in this particular study eat 500 additional calories a day. Remember, 3,500 calories makes you gain one pound. So within a few days, you can gain one pound. And if that keeps going, you know that belly fat is growing. So these are the five uh, telltale signs. Foggy mind, unhappiness, sick a lot, struggling through workouts, and you're struggling with your weight. So let's get to how do you prepare for a good night's sleep? And you know what? High quality sleep starts in the morning. Yep, it doesn't just start how to get to bed on time and all this other stuff. It starts with waking up at the right time. Now, sometimes we can't control when we wake up. 
you have to get up at six to shower, to change, to do whatever you need to get done. And you have to be at the Metro stop at seven 30 or whatever the time is. You have to be somewhere. But as the body goes through, through different stages of sleep, I think it could be ver- a worthwhile um, exploration if you used a, a wearable to track your sleep and pinpoint the time, the optimal or the best time for you to wake up out of your deep sleep. Could be a challenge first, but um, check around any wearables and see if you can pinpoint your sleep cycles. You may sleep more than you think, but you also have a time that maybe at 5.30 would be a better time for you to wake up than the the 6 o'clock time. So try this out. I think it's a very good idea. I know of um, two people that have applied that wearable method to track their uh, sleep and pinpoint the optimal wake-up time. So here, that will be number one. So try that out. Number two. Now, this is super cute and super, well, cute. It's I think it's cute because it's a wake-up light. So here's the wake-up light. It naturally raises your cortisol levels and helps you feel alert and relaxed. Now, I know many who have a morning goes, meh, 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 or any of those, or whatever you have, your favorite song starting to blare at you. So what is the wake-up light? Or how does it work? It's a light that starts um, glowing 30 minutes before the alarm starts. So it simulates a sunrise. So it's, it's really cute, round, little clock-alike light. And it simulates a sunrise and it, the sun comes up gradually with your wake-up light. So the idea is that you will be already awake and out of your deep sleep by the time the alarm of the wake-up light goes on. So along with increased brightness of the light, it also starts in gradually increasing the wake-up noise, sound, whatever you want to use. I think that's just perfect. Now that you have gently been awakened by your wake-up light, it's time to get moving right away. Nope, nope, nope. No hitting the snooze button, ladies. Swing around, sit up, and put your feet on the ground. It has shown in several studies that this process of getting moving right away, sitting up, putting your feet down, will help or speed speed up the process of waking up instead of the snooze button that makes you sleepier and sleepier. Now, one... uh amazing thing that I want to talk about is melatonin. And we all know now that melatonin comes in a bottle, but you know what? You can get it for free through sunlight. Melatonin increases the wakefulness during the day and helps you sleep at night. That's some cool little rascal there. So what is melatonin other than something that comes in a bottle? Melatonin is a natural hormone made by your body's, and I hope I pronounced this right, pineal gland. This is a pea-sized gland located just above the middle of your brain. And during the day, this little gland is inactive. So when the sun goes down and it gets dark, the pineal gland is turned on and it begins to produce actively melatonin, which is released into your bloodstream. Super cool, right? So this usually occurs around 9 p.m. Perfect bedtime if you ask me. So as a result, melatonin levels rise sharply and you begin to feel less alert because it's a sleepy hormone. Hormone levels in the blood stay elevated for about 12 hours and return to a low daytime level at around 9 a.m., So daytime levels of melatonin are barely detectable. So easy melatonin dose for you ladies. Go outside for a walk at lunchtime, sit in the sun, and like I would say, get yourself some melatonin. Number five, uh, be careful of caffeine and alcohol at night. 
coming home from work, drinking uh, a several glass of wine just to go to sleep can interfere with your sleep, even though you think it may help. Or drinking caffeine for some of us after 2 p.m. can interfere with sleeping. So maybe start a little log and see how you slept after you had coffee in the afternoon or a few drinks before bedtime or both. But ideally, you probably want to uh, separate it so you know how does caffeine affect me and how does alcohol affect me. But keep that in mind. And you know, one of the super things that I root for, the bestest thing of all times to get sleep is exercise. Exercise, any kind of exercise helps regulate your body's body clock for 24 hours and regulates your hormone levels. Now, this is super cool about the body. I just love how the body functions and it takes care of itself and um, and what you can do to contribute to your health. So exercise, walk, run, swim, I don't care what it is to your heart's desire, but move. Regular exercise will help you sleep. However, from my own experience, I learned that swimming long endurance swims uh, at seven o'clock at night will make it really hard for me to go to sleep. And uh, it takes a lot of time to wind down. I just recently started back with my 90 minutes endurance swim and the swim finished at nine and you feel really great. You exercised, you're tired, but boy, oh boy, at 11 o'clock, I'm still thumping my fingers going, can't go to sleep. So keep that in mind when you exercise. How much you eat at dinner also affects your sleep. So eat a small dinner at night. So if you remember to um, a previous or listen to a previous podcast of mine, follow the 80% full rule. So you're not stuffed. So you feel you could eat a little bit more, but you have a nice dinner compiled of minimally processed carbs, protein, and fats to keep you full. Plus, slow digesting carbs can make you sleep a whole lot better. What are slow digestible carbs? Vegetables, beans, quinoa, brown rice, some nuts and seeds. So throw that in with your dinner and they will help with your sleep. Another word of caution is uh, drinking a lot of liquids before bedtime. Horrible. I just recently read somebody suggested that uh, as a, before you go to bed, drink some water. Stop right there. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go, I don't know, for a hundred of bathroom breaks. So limit your liquids. What has worked for me? I stopped drinking liquids two to three hours before bedtime. Um, I may still get up once a night, but not a heck of a lot. So limit liquids before bedtime. Number nine, clear your mind and de-stress in the evening. That's a biggie. As we come home from work, we rush around, get more stuff done, do the dishes, and then we do the fall exhausted on the couch, drink a glass of wine, watch Netflix drill. Take time for yourself. Sit with a cup of tea and no distraction, decaffeinated hopefully, as we talked about the caffeine earlier. Do some breathing exercises. Doesn't have to be a hours of that. Maybe write in your journal if you are a journal writer, but clear your mind and don't take the stress of work with you to bed and deal with it when you wake up at night. I like to read at night. It really puts me to sleep. But number 10 is how technology technology affects our sleep makes a big difference. Listen to this. Reading a book is perfect. You turn the pages and 
the backlight, the blue backlight does not keep you awake. And most of us, and I'm too, I can read on my phone. I have different apps where I stored several books for convenient purposes. And I also have regular books. But if you read, uh, take a regular book or one that doesn't have the blue light. According to the National Sleep Foundation, 90% of people surveyed admitted to using electronics prior to sleeping. Researchers found having uh, used these devices so close to bedtime can lead to sleep disturbances and low energy. So why is the blue uh, light before bedtime bad for your sleep? You could say, well, it's a light and I don't know any different. Uh, current research suggests suggests that the shorter wavelength in blue light it what causes the body to produce less melatonin. We talked about melatonin earlier because the body is more sensitive to this type of light. In another study, they have found that blue wavelengths suppress delta brain waves, which induce sleep and boost alpha wavelengths which create alertness. So keep in mind where you're reading your nighttime reading, what technology you use. And if you're not sure, ask the manufacturer, do some research, uh, because it is important to know how reading that makes me drowsy can actually keep you awake. And it's not the interesting book that you just recently purchased. Now we're on to number 11, um, how to go to bed at a reasonable time. That can be a challenge for many of us. Uh, our body teaches us well before midnight that it's time to go to sleep and our melatonins are starting to do their work. Remember, melatonin uh, production starts around 9 p.m. But what happens in our life? What is happening before the reasonable bedtime? Things just keep coming up. That means item number 12, it change what keeps you from going to bed earlier. So here it is. Picture this. You came home and I said it. You did, uh, you worked, you cooked your dinner, you did all this. And suddenly... The dinner cooking just takes much longer than you thought. So two hours later, you finally finished and it's way late. You ate late. You ate way too much. You uh, didn't have time to de-stress because it's all ready time to go to bed. So plan your evening. I'm serious. This sometimes takes quite a bit of really getting the people in your life to cooperate with you. Um, some of us, I'm raising my my virtual hand here again, work till late at night. Um, and I've stopped that. So in our house, work stops now at 7 p.m. We work together to have our dinner done by 7.30. We're eating latest at 8 p.m. And we have a light 80% full dinner and then we start reading. So that's how most of our evening goes, or one of us, when my husband may take a shower, or we uh, just putter around the house. So keep that in mind. Plan dinner well ahead of time and at a certain time, right? We, we have 7.30 as our dinner time. So work diligently towards that. Stop work well before bedtime. I used to, about a year ago, when I launched the Pursue Your Spark uh, project, I call it my new brand, I worked till 10 o'clock and ate somewhere in the middle. So stop working before, way before that. It's not worth it and you can always do it the next day. If you, ha if you have kids, don't let your kids run your life because they need their sleep too. Put in place some rules. Start maybe with a dinner. That time we have dinner. Everybody can get involved. The kids, the husband, grandma, whoever lives with you. Everybody's doing dinner. Or one person cooks. But we do in our house. 
My husband usually cooks, as you know by now. Uh, I love to do the dishes, so I do dishes. And if you have somebody else, they could just take out the trash or divide your chores so everybody can settle down at a reasonable time. Outside interference is something that is also not helping you sleep. If you have curtains, close your curtains, close down the blinds, don't let the outside light in, make everything just nice and cozy and and comfortable and quiet. Do you know, this is number 13, how much sleep you actually are getting per night? There is currently, in the last year or two, many, many people pride themselves of sleeping less. I only slept nine hours. Uh, Nine hours, I'm sorry. I only slept four hours. And I feel great. I feel energized. I feel so Wow, incredibly motivated, and I get so much more done. Does that ring a bell? Have you heard that before? Or maybe you are one of those. Sleeping less than four hours a night is not a good strategy in the long run. What we're aiming for are seven to nine hours of sleep per night. You go in, hi, Gate. I cannot sleep that much. I don't have that much time. So go back to item number 12. Organize your evening. Get dinner done earlier. Wind down time earlier. Reading the book or relaxing to music a little earlier. Even if you get an additional 30 minutes per night, it will make a huge difference in how you f- difference in how you feel the next day. I promise you. So, so we have a great plan here of things that you can implement right away. So we started out with waking up at the right time, getting your wearable, perhaps trying the wake up light, get moving right away. Stop hitting the buzzer. Number four was our getting more sunlight, getting more melatonin, getting more sleep. Number five, was careful with alcohol and caffeine in the afternoon. We're keeping in mind that exercise is really good for your body and your hormone levels to help you sleep. But we're aware that we don't want to exercise super late at night. We're eating a small to medium dinner that is full of slow digestible vegetables. And we're applying our 80% full rule. And we definitely are limiting... Uh, liquids way before bedtime to avoid those bathroom breaks. Not fun because they can keep you awake as well. We're making sure that we clear our mind and de-stress from the day. We're being, we are keeping an eye on the technology we use that might keep us awake. We try to go to bed at a reasonable time because remember, when the melaton- melatonin starts production at 9 p.m., mm, my favorite bedtime. Change your evening routine so you get to bed a little earlier and try to get at least seven to nine hours of sleep per night. So here's what your questions were. Can you now apply new strategies If you can't stick to a sleep schedule, can you apply a new strategy now because you're not going to bed on time? And how do you get energy if you can't sleep? My 13 steps, pick one. Pick the one that resonates the most with you and start with one itty bitty little item that you can do. And here are the four rituals that I want to finish up with that you can start instantly. Turn off your electronics at night. Just read a book, listen to music, do breathing. You don't need to be on Facebook for the next hour. Take a hot shower or a bath. Relax. Plan on downtime. Whatever your downtime is, that may be playing a game with the kids or knitting or whatever it is you like to do. There's a lot, ton of fun things to do that just whew, decompress your body. Turn out the light. 
Remember, darkness gives the body the cue to produce melatonin, while light does not. So what do you say? Is it possible to get more sleep and energy? I say yes. One step at a time, not all those steps at once. Perhaps start with the four evening rituals I just mentioned before, so to get you going, and then work your way towards the other bigger steps. Will it be perfect? Not all the time, but it is worth laying out a pl- an act plan of action of how to get more sleep and more energy because you sleep more. And now you know how you can get more sleep and where to get it. So that's it for now. That's all I got. Until next time, where I want to talk about something that I do struggle a little bit with, and that's being perfect. I do have a tendency to be perfect and want everything perfect and want the people in my life to be perfect. So until next time where I talk about how to overcome perfectionism. So until then, have a great week and I'll see you next time. Ciao!